sunshines. So have you ever been the victim of a bad photo? I think we all have. You think your makeup is looking good, you're so proud of it, and then bam, someone uploads the worst tag photo in the history of Facebook. Or maybe you've got a legitimate photo shoot coming up for a wedding, maternity pictures, graduation, you name it. So today I'm gonna give you my top 10 tips for avoiding makeup faux pas while you're having your pictures taken. But first, make sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you guys never miss a thing. I'm also curious to know what your worst, most embarrassing photo makeup mistakes were. I know some of mine include lipstick on my teeth. I've done that one a lot. Not taking enough time to blend my contour and just assuming it was good. And wearing foundation that was 8,000 shades too dark because it was summer and I was delusional about what I look like after spending what's probably like a whole 45 minutes at the pool that year. Are these just me? Tell me I'm not alone. Okay, so my first piece of advice is going to go against anything I've ever told you. Skip the sunscreen. Now the reason for this is because flash photography does not work well with sunscreen. It's going to reflect back off of the SPF in your powder or your foundation and potentially create a flashback and make you look really washed out, best case scenario, or if you've ever seen those really awful celebrity pictures where it looks like they've just caked powder on the side of their face, it's the flashback from the photography, it's not how their makeup actually looks. So if you're doing a photo shoot outside on a sunny day, please still wear your SPF. And one of the best ways to do it in that case would be to use a foundation primer that has sunscreen built into it and then still not use any foundation or powder that contains SPF. But definitely for indoor photo shoots or nighttime photography where there's gonna be a flash, you want to avoid SPF at all costs. Now my next tip regards what kind of foundation you wanna go with. Using a really luminous foundation for photography can give you a little bit too shiny of a look, especially if you're a combination to oily skin type. So for pretty much everybody, I recommend using a soft matte foundation or sort of a demi matte so that way it's matte but it doesn't look flat or dry. Now I really like the Too Faced Born This Way foundation for this. It's really full coverage but it doesn't get cakey and it's got that nice soft matte appearance to it that doesn't make my skin look too dry or too oily. Some other good foundations to go with are the Makeup Forever HD foundation or the L'Oreal True Match foundation if you're looking for a drugstore option. Now, tip number three is when you apply your foundation, make sure that you have a foundation that matches your jawline perfectly. The last thing you want is too light foundation because all the lights and the flash from the photography is going to potentially make you look washed out as it is. So if your foundation is even just a slight bit too light, it can really make you look ghostly. Now, tip number four is actually one of my favorite makeup tips, and it's good for a lot of reasons, but it is curl your lashes. Curling your lashes does so much to make you look more wide-eyed and awake, and to make your lashes look fuller because they're turned upwards. Now, I also really like to wear false lashes when I know I'm gonna be taking pictures, so that way I've got that nice, definition around my eye area, but by all means, skip this and just go heavy on the mascara if you're not comfortable applying lashes and you're afraid that they might come off. Number five is that it's okay to go a little bit more dramatic on your makeup, especially contours of your eyes, or your lips, because cameras usually wash away a lot of the color. So everything that you see in the mirror is gonna be toned down and farther away than as close as you are to the mirror. One of the best ways to see if you're happy with how your look shows up in photos is before you call it a day or tell your makeup artist if you're getting your makeup professionally done for these photo shoots, that you wanna take a picture on your cell phone just in natural lighting to double check and get a rough idea of how your makeup's gonna show up in photos. So 
So number five is that it's okay to go a little bit darker or heavier than maybe you normally would, especially on your eye makeup. Now this really goes for people that like more of a natural makeup look and it's totally okay to go with neutrals and more natural colors, but by putting a little bit more definition into your crease and really defining your lashes, you'll still look like you have eyeballs, even from far away. Number six is one of my favorite tricks for when I would be doing bridal makeup. Blush is always the first thing to go on your makeup. It's the first thing to fade, it's instantly gone, and flash photography can really wash your face out. So, I like to layer a cream blush or a little bit of lipstick And it's okay if it looks a little crazy right now. And then you're gonna go ahead and apply your foundation on top of it. And this is a technique called underpainting. So that's gonna just tone that cream down and really lock it in. And then you're just gonna apply a regular powder blush on top of it. And I usually like to go pretty pigmented with this. So I'm gonna go with the Becca Luminous Blush in Snapdragon. So that way, if the powder blush fades, which it eventually will, you've got that underneath layer of cream that will still give your face a little bit of color as you go through the photo shoot or through the evening if you're going to a special event. Number seven. Now you guys know I love my highlighter and I normally can't be glowy enough, especially because I have really dry skin. But with flash photography and photo shoots, an all over glow can look like all over grease. So I suggest bringing blotting sheets along if you tend to get oily at all. That way you can tone down the shine and make sure that you are glowing only in the areas that you want to be, i.e. not the chin. I don't, I hate it. I don't do chin highlighter. It looks like you've been eating greasy pizza, in which case I'll just eat greasy pizza. Number eight is my favorite photo secret weapon, and that is HD powder, and it comes in a variety of brands. It's basically just silica-based powder. It's gonna be a lot more fine than your traditional setting powder, which is made to absorb oils. This is just gonna blur surface texture visually and make everything look really smooth and perfectly flawless on camera. No pores, you can even blot it in your lips if you feel like your lips are a little dry and they look creasy. This stuff does wonders. And I also do often use HD powder in place of regular setting powder for people that have really, really dry skin and makeup slipping isn't as much of a concern for them. It's not gonna give you the staying power, but it does lock down creams a little bit and make everything look so, so smooth. Now, Makeup Forever's HD setting powder is probably my favorite. That's the one I've been using for a long time, but I also do really like the Smooth Operator by Tarte. These are both silica-based powders, and you'll notice that they're both little, like, almost travel size. That's because I keep getting them in kits when I buy kits of different things, usually around the holidays, and they just last me for ever. I, it's been years since I've had to go out and buy a full size separate powder because a little bit goes such a long way. And that's coming from somebody that wears makeup every single day. So usually if I'm gonna run through a product, I go through it fast. So what you're gonna do is you just tap a little bit right in the lid. And then I just use a small powder brush and you just pick up a little bit and I like to really concentrate it in the areas where I tend to have texture. So right in the center of my face where my pores might be more prominent. On my forehead where I don't really have um, wrinkles but I do kind of have expression lines. And along my chin, it's also great for mattifying. 
Okay, so number nine, I love bronzer. I love to contour, I love it so much. I don't have a really perfectly defined Hollywood jaw, so I have to fake it with makeup, like many of us. But, if you don't blend it, it looks like a nightmare. So my number nine tip is to make sure and contour to get the most flattering photo, but blend it really, really well. And using a powder is gonna be a lot more forgiving than trying to go in with a cream if you're nervous about it. Goodbye, double chin. Goodbye. Now number 10 is something that is a little tweak that can make a huge impact. Don't forget how your makeup is going to make your teeth look. By using a lipstick that has a bluer or cooler tone to it, it's going to make your teeth look a lot more white than if you use something that has more of an orange or a warmer tone. So, for example, if I was gonna wear a red lipstick, I would make sure and pick a nice, cool, blue-toned red lipstick that's going to complement my teeth and make them look more white versus more of a coral, which is really, really pretty, but the orange in the lipstick picks up and can make teeth look more yellow than the other one. Now, in addition to that, make sure and do the old finger trick to get any excess lipstick off before you go to your photo shoot, or you'll wind up like me on many an occasion with nice lipstick smears all on your teeth. Another way to avoid this is to put a little bit of Vaseline just on your front teeth to keep the lipstick from sticking. Now, I said 10, but I do have one bonus tip because this is something that I wanted to mention. And it's something that's always at the front of my mind when I'm doing someone's makeup for photo shoots or for a special event. And that is staying power. You want to prime everything. I use a really good silicone based primer to fill in texture and make foundation last before I apply any face products. And I'm normally not a big fan of silicone primers because it kind of can tend to clog pores and for me causes me to break out. But for special events, that is my go-to. And I also always, always, always make sure and prime eyeshadow. That way you don't get any creasing or anything like that on your hard work that you put in to have a really great look. And the last thing I do to make sure that makeup doesn't budge is I always use a really good setting spray at the very end, but usually right before I do my mascara. Because if you put a lot of mascara on and then hose yourself down with some setting spray, you could potentially get some smudges, which is never fun to fix. So hopefully this will see you through any professional or impromptu photos you may be taking. Make sure and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. And hit that subscribe button so that way you guys don't miss any of the videos coming out for you on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And as always, make sure and share this video if you know of anybody that could use a little sunshine in their day.